So here we are um, in your little workshop in your garden. Yeah. And it is, in fact, the first week of February. Yeah. Um, and so I remember you saying something about like something should be north facing or something like that for the light. The light. Um, oh, now what was the name of the guy? Uh, a well-known furniture maker. Uh, God. Yeah. Oh, on the tip of my tongue. He wrote a book all about a big fat book on cabinet making the professional approach. Oh. And the one thing I gleaned from that was if you have a workshop, make sure you've got north facing lights. Yeah. I've got this, uh, it's only double skin, it's not terribly heat proof, but uh, uh, yeah, so you get light there. So on a miserable day, it actually seems lighter in here than it does outside. It's good and you don't get the glare. What you do get though is, is when a God's or Mother Nature, whoever it was, clever inventions is that in the winter you get the light coming in and in the summer, the, the sun's high and you, so you don't get the glare coming in it's nice right it? okay yeah. so th so uh, this side is north facing That's north facing yeah um and yeah the friend who was helping me put that on said why on earth are you put in the the light there why don't you put it on the sun sunny side and of course when we were doing this in 1998 mm. um solar panels and all that was still quite new on the scene but we've since got solar panels obviously on the south side so that's great it's the only only oh, we sure, couldn't get yeah. couldn't find anywhere on the house to put them so we put them up the top there so and they're facing due south so that's it's yeah it's all it's all good great yeah. and it's you know super cozy in here got the wood burner going um what's what size is this this is like 20 foot by 12 foot uh Six meters by four meters, if that. Oh, uh, 20 foot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was a German, you know, it was a German, Mikhail, Mikhail Schutter. Oh, and right. I thought this was Joel Hendry. No. And Joel Hendry did Tamsin Studio up right. there. No, this is Mikhail Schutter. German. Who got in touch. He had done his carpentry training in Germany. Yeah. And was then doing his year wandering around wearing the funny kit. And he was sort of cheating a little bit. He <laughs> said he'd like to come over and learn how to do green woodwork. Mm. And at which point Tamsin had been taken on responsibility for doing the roof on the barn at Clissett Wood. Oh, okay. And so he said, yeah, you come over, help put the barn on Clissett Wood and uh, we'll teach you how to make green wood chairs. So we did. And then I just casually said, oh, I'm going to put up a workshop in the garden this summer. And I st <laughs> he had this uh, mannerism, nodding his head, like, like, like the, the puppets on the Thunderbird. I will build it for you if you like. And so oh, he built, instead of putting up a sort of pole structure, you know, with poles and bolts and screws and things like that, he did this thing, uh, got his friend Hauke, who just in the same situation had just done his uh, training in carving. Mm. So if you look up on that beam, uh, you've got, uh, some animals or I can't remember and then on this side you've got the runes that he carved in there which funny enough when Dougal was at primary school they were doing runes and so mm. he had to get it translated and it says something like this was built by Michael and Hauke and Paul uh, they oh. got Paul Slemmings who's now a professional timber framer with carpenter open woodland and things so the three of them pitched up here for five weeks and built this and we went out to Clissett Wood that that crook that that was my main contribution was fell in that and chainsaw come axing it and then that the front wall up there is much more germanic in structure and um i don't know about the back here what how that came about and but as as with everything that we've we've done it's predominantly all been done by volunteers who've in much the same manner as ben laws got everything done for down in Sussex. Um, yeah, it's a good way to be. So it's, it's a perfect, it's a wonderful way to do things. Yeah. And so, uh, did he kind of just camp in the garden for the summer? Whilst so yeah, they camped up where Tamsin Studio is now. Yeah. Uh, Mikhail and yeah, Mikhail and Halker and. And Paul. so was this one first or Tamsin? So this was first. Yeah. yeah. This was we moved we moved in here on officially. Well, the the, the uh, all the all the paperwork for this house went through on Valentine's Day in 97 mm. and I was over running a course in Denmark and Tamsin was over with me. I can't remember where we were at with babies and things. I think probably Nettie was a sort of swelling in the, yeah, Nettie was a swelling in the tummy in February. Yeah. And then um, on May the 1st, we officially moved in, which was a historical day. It's a day that 
the Tony Blair government came to power. Oh dear. Things can only get better. It was a brave yeah. new world. We also discovered that our local councillor was a green oh. and really thought, yeah, this yeah. is the end of history, as they say. You know, the, the, the dream is fulfilled. We got Clissett, we got our shares in Clissett Wood. We'd been in Clissett Wood uh, running courses for about three or four years by then. Mm. We'd got our little house, got our first child was three, three weeks away from being born. Tamsin had to go somewhere else when we moved in here. And in fact, Joel helped us move in, in here. And, and later on, he did a bit of work on the porch, I think, yeah. as well. So, yeah, 97, but in sort of things getting better from them they just come down here steadily <laughs> well let's um get off that uh <laughs> downhill trend um so you were saying that uh tamsin had uh was pregnant yeah. and that was february and that kind of leads us on to in bulk right because that's what yeah it's all about yeah yeah so in in theory it's a old irish word that means in the belly or something it and could it's do. And I don't know. It was it was you that reminded me about in bulk. I've never really used the term. Well, you that say much. you, but oh. as in like that's the that's the thing. It's the lambing, uh, being mm. pregnant with lambs, right? And I, right, yeah. So it's, this is just me kind of googling it, and um, <laughs> right. it's meant to be like the uh, festival of milk and fire or something. So yeah, it could well be. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, the other thing I have heard is that it's about um, cleansing. Um, but no, I think the kind of in the belly sounds more appropriate and yeah. that's amazing that that's when you kind of moved in here. Yeah, I hadn't really thought of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so um, the this time of year for you, in, in our last session you were talking about how um, this is when you kind of start coming to life again. Yeah. Um, so, and do you mean kind of later this month or is it, is this, no, this is February, just the beginning? We actually had a day, I can't remember, about 10 days ago mm. uh, where it actually felt like spring. Yeah. And that is, for me, that is the best. It's often a weekend in February, but it, it, we just got that little snippet. And that's the best day of the year that you, you, yeah. you can feel the sap rising and, and you can feel the energy coming back. Mm. and yeah the snowdrops show their little faces and the first little tweety birds start singing and things and it's it's just it's just wonderful and i've i've always lived with this cycle of the year this yeah. is why this doing these chats with you is is great because mm. um i did a thing for uh, the the calendar that the the Anyway, there's a calendar that Tamsin did stuff for. Yes. And I did it about the, the pole lay, <coughs> you know, and it's, it's, it's just like the pole lay. And we're just at that point where the pole, you know, that it goes back up in the autumn, mm. sort of hovers there from Christmas to in bulk. And now in bulk, it just starts moving, but it hasn't got speed up. It'll get speed up when, it, when we hit the, the equinox. Mm -hmm. And then that's when it starts producing, you know, and it's that spring first bit of the summer is is the bit where the wood is flying off the tool and yeah. then you get back down to autumn again and then it, it it goes back up and i i very much go with that you know my uh, i was never i did ask the doctor if he thought i was whatever it's called now manic depressive and he said you you, you don't know what you don't know what real manic depressive is but yeah. i've got that tendency and so if we have a look outside you'll see you know at the end of the courses in september what usually ha what usually happens is then I, I sort of pull the pull the woodwork stuff to one side and then we get some benches out and things like that mm. and that's when we'll have you know a few parties autumn party and a, some singing at Christmas and things like that and we have a spring party but with COVID the last couple of winters it's it's just laid dormant and I just I just abandon it really yeah um, so it's between now and the equinox when I'll, I'll start sort of tidying up and things and this is where if you remember you know when we were up in the woods. Uh, the equinox was the weekend when we would move out. The clocks change usually. And so when is that? That's March time, is it? End of March. Yeah. yeah. 22nd, 23rd of March. Yeah, because I uh, did a couple of seasons of kind of felling with you that mm. time of year. Yeah, well, that would have been about in bulk. Yeah, between in bulk and then. Yeah, that's yeah. when you do your felling. Is Well, any time between Halloween and, and, and equinox, really. But yeah. that, that's, that's the best time, is, is, is that. Uh, early spring because you know the days are getting a bit nicer it's not quite so cold or yeah, yeah. and it's funny because we, we're talking before and I was saying very much how I love you know November December and Christmas and all that 
and actually that I really struggle this time of year. Mm. Um, but I, ha I haven't found it so difficult, I think. And I, I also, we very much, I think, had that same spring day um, down in the forest. We were, mm. down, we were out on the river um, and it was blazing sunshine mm. and, uh, you know, jumpers off and mm. Um, mm. there is that kind of hope. Um, mm. And then so uh, on our drive up here, we've gone past and seen um, the orchards all with their branches um, having been pruned. So mm. I guess, uh, yeah, that's that's probably most people are doing more of the kind of forestry stuff kind of January, February time, mm. really, aren't they? Rather mm. than kind of November, December. Mm. Um, so, yeah, well, uh, I think it's it's great. Um, talking about all these different things, but I think it would be nice to maybe get out in the garden and have a little look. Well, we've organised a bit of sunshine for you. Pro yeah. Problem is, the sun's low and we've got trees all around the place, bloody things. But uh, yeah, let's yeah. go and have a look then. Yeah, great. Yeah. Lovely. So um, this is such a nice part of the garden. It's great uh, to be out in the sun. It's lovely being in the sun. This, um, is, this is what's sort of, yeah, kind of known as the village. We've got my workshop there and Tamsin's studio there and this cabin and the bender and things. And yeah, you know, the fire pit. So it's a nice, nice little spot to be. And this is a wonderful little apple tree. It's called the sunset. And we put this in not long after we moved here. This was basically just a field when we moved in. Uh, 25 years ago on Valentine's, well, this spring anyway. Uh, but it, it just keeps going. A lot of trees, uh, yeah, they have a year on and a year off. And uh, yeah, my dad uh, actually wrote the definitive book on the apple tree, its physiology and management. Um, right. But he never really told me much about how to do stuff. But uh, So hang on a sec, a sunset is a year on, year off? No, mo most apple trees, yeah, they oh. have a fruiting year. Yeah. And then they have a year where they don't bother, but this one just keeps going every year. Touch wood, you know, and yeah. It's, yeah, it's just laden with uh, little babies. So, yeah, you can see I'm trying to keep it so that everything's within picking height and mowing height. So, yeah, yeah, and it's, it's yeah, I'm very, very happy with and it. And can you talk us through the pruning? So I can see that you've done some pruning recently. <laughs> yeah. What um, What's the thinking? I mean, I, I know you said that my, you're trying to keep it My mate right Hamish, height. who sells farming machinery, is is the the one the only one who's ever told me what to do and you get a shoot coming out that'd be about sort of three or four foot and he says come along one two three three buds and then prune it but i've taken all that with a bit of license and then checking it up against my dad's book um you know yeah you get the shoots and you you cut them back a bit because obviously you don't well you see that tree over there that i have to put a ladder up there but it's nice if you're able to reach the trees, especially if they're eaters. This is an eating tree that, that's related to uh, Cox's orange pippin, I think. And um, so it's nice if you can actually pick the trees. So you don't want to be incredibly high. Although it's now getting almost strong enough where I could start putting ladders into it and things. So, uh, But also you've got your solar panels. So uh, I have to start taking the light off the solar panels, especially that one there. And also then the view from Tamsin's place, you know, we don't want that getting too tall. So it's all, you know, a bit of this, bit of that, really. Um, and and so, um, yeah, obviously winter time is time for pruning fruit trees. Yeah. What? So what kind of else have you been been up to in the garden? Uh, yeah, I don't do much in the garden really. No. <laughs> it's that kind of time of year, isn't it? It's I suppose yeah, it's, 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 it's that dormant time. Yeah. Yeah. Like the same. You know, if uh, today's the sort of day where I would be out and I've still got a veg patch to dig over, which I should have done in the autumn really, but I don't like, you know, as I've said, I don't much like November, December. So, um, well, but it's good to have a deadline, isn't it? I suppose now the sun's out, you start to yeah. panic a little bit and all the things that should have been done in the, in the late winter, um, there's not much time left. Is uh, that's right. Yeah. I've got yeah. to start doing it and got to start thinking about planting, you know, putting baby taters and things in the ground and what seeds we're going to grow and those sort of things yeah but yeah I don't do gardening in a huge way it's interesting actually when we moved up this way yeah uh, and got Clissett Wood I, I 
found out all I could do about Philip Clisson. He probably spent as much time in his garden as he did in his workshop, I think. Right. He was a very keen gardener, I think. It was yeah. Probably, you know, not stuff for sale, but um, yeah, producing enough. I don't think he had animals or whatever, but he, he apparently he was a very keen gardener. Yeah. yeah. And and it goes it goes nicely together. And then all the prunings, you know, so you get these sort of you know that length sticks. So I collect them, bundle them all up, leave them kicking around in the garden, and and then they they'll probably get used either on the fire pit or um, if you know if they're now then dead and crackly, then we'll I'll put the chainsaw through them and use them all for kindling. So it's a, it all it all gets used somehow or other. Oh, I say that there's quite a sizable bonfire in fact, but. Uh, yeah, like and I use, suppose that's like to use what I can. The the that concept of the festival of the milk and the fire. I yeah. do wonder whether that's that's part of that uh, the kind of brash and the prunings needing to be burnt. Yeah, um, yeah. All these traditions <coughs> have a have a basis, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or maybe it's just the warmth of the fire. I wonder in the olden days they might have seen firewood as more precious. I suppose it depends. Oh, they would have done. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, in the commercial orchards down there, you see bloody great big plumes of smoke going up, and I think you know that that would be my su firewood supply for the year. But yeah. it takes time, and you know, time is money in this day and age. Whereas when you're a doddery old pensioner, um, it's a different ball game. And so, yeah, yeah, I spent. Well, when the sun was out, yeah, I probably spent a couple of hours with the secateurs snipping all the, the little apple prunings, and then mm. yeah, I've got a, yeah, I've got a bundle of twigs about that that size with a, a bit of old seating cord, uh, holding them all together. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's go and have a look at the rest of the garden. Right. <laughs> so, are these where you have your bath? <laughs> This is where um, I fill them up with water out of the stream when the summer comes along and put the logs in there to soak for sort of three or four days before the courses. And I'm still still, you know, not convinced it's a, a good thing to do. But one thing it certainly does, it, it softens up the bark. And, you know, if you fell your trees in the summer, then the bark peels off nicely. You fell your trees in the winter, then it's a real pain to get the bark off. But leave them in here for three days and the bark will come off just like they would do in spring. So oh, OK. If nothing Amazing. else, it serves yeah. that purpose. But at the moment, yeah, they're just uh, full of leaves at the moment. So uh, that will get cleared out. Great. So um, this is where you do all your teaching. It is nowadays, yeah, since um, 2016 when I moved back from the woods. Yeah. And so um, this is obviously in hibernation it phase. Is. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you want to just give us a quick talk through of what the structure is? Because, you know, how many how many of these kind of structures have you made? I know you've had quite a lot of very um, temporary things that you've kind of moved about, but in terms of like, what would you even call this? An A-frame or something? No. Uh, it's, it's, a, <laughs> I don't know, it's a structure, yeah. It's a but I've had, probably had about 10 or so, you know, this. Yeah. So this was billed as, yeah, Mike's final erection, <laughs> which <laughs> uh, I got the timber from Toby and Ali just down the road. And uh, the, uh, the, the, the initial thing was to have an eight, eight meter long tarp that way yeah. by four this way the prevailing wind comes from that direction and it worked fine you know and the rain ran off there down just about into the stream at the back um, but there was one week when we got rain coming from the north and it hammered down Ooh. and uh, you know we, we, yeah it was raining right right up to this point here so then the following year I tacked that bit on and the eight before tarp went up to the dining area, which is up there. And then I got an eight by eight. And this has worked really nicely um, with those bits of uh, bungee. that length of bungee. You can see, you know, when the wind comes along, it flaps it. But that also t gave me an extra meter or so out the back. So I've got nice space there for storing timber. Uh, and the okay. water then, uh, the, the, the rain runs off straight into the stream or pretty mm. well into the stream uh, and it, this works really nicely so you know this is what I would kind of recommend to people it was a bit it was a bit bloody stupid actually just having a single pitch but uh, you know yeah 
as you'll well know, Barn, you know, the, the, my whole thing is to is to try things, and the more mistakes you make, the more you learn. If you yes. get things right, then you know what a nightmare. Waste of time. <laughs> waste of time getting things right. It's much more fun to learn. And and the you know the great thing is all all the input. You know, like I was saying with the light coming into that workshop, there comes mm. out of a book. Some uh, there's a guy called John who who came up with all sorts of clever little gadgets, which will probably see when the workshop's in action yes um, and so I guess the, the general gist of it because uh, you're in Herefordshire is that you've got this wonderful kind of clay floor that was yeah. just there yeah um, and that's kind of doing all right although it is winter and it's a bit wet everywhere isn't yeah it? in the summer <coughs> it, it, it dries out and it, that that's a really nice finish this yeah this here and we just yeah we had some rain didn't we? it has been quite a dry winter this this time but last uh, where are we now? Um, when COVID first hit, so that was 2020, we're on 22 now, so almost two years ago, I dug a little French ditch along there and got some um, uh, of this perforated pipe. Mm. And so that, if, if there's any ex excess this rain way. coming down that way, then it goes out into the stream. Because there, be, there would be times we'd be running the course and I'd be going around with a mop, going Amazing. around mopping up all the water that was flowing down the hill, but touch wood we've not had that one since and it's the same with that um i haven't put a gutter up there but there's perforated stuff goes down there and finishes up in that patch there which we've got some roses healed in at the moment but that will oh, okay. be it has been runner beans um for the last few years so i'm going to put climbing french beans there and then put the runner beans in up there so yeah the whole thing is sort of integrated with the gardening really and then I guess the general gist in the olden days would have been you'd have your pole loads out the front here with your poles going out that way. Bunch uh, of shaving horses. The shaving horses, shaving horses and benches. This, this was never designed to go with, with the pole lays. But you're right, yeah, you, you, you could have your poles leaning in there. In fact, uh, you see there's a bungee cord up the top. That it, oh, on okay, occasions yeah. I do set a lathe up here and then hitch it up to the bungee cord. Yeah. Um, or we have had a pole lathe coming in from that end there. But yeah, the pole lathe is, is pretty well obsolete again, except just when I want to show off and make some babies rattles up. Yeah. <laughs> or if, you know, if I need to turn a, a turned pin or something like that. Although these, you know, that nowadays that's just shade because, um, yeah, because I, I don't use the pole lathe so much now. No. No, it's a bit sad, really. But well, sorry, it's progress. good to it's good <laughs> to use a shaving horse. So um, I guess yeah, the the main th structural things are obviously shelter. You've got the wood store behind. You've got tool storage, um, and we've got cleaving. The cleaving break. break there. Yeah, I've got some bits of oak. I've been. Yeah, what's cleaving. that about? <coughs> what's that about? Ah, this is this is uh, the first little signs of the. Abbott's hopeful next phase, um, a possible move up to Shropshire. Okay. And uh, there's a group of people out there managing uh, a little patch of oak woodland. Oh, uh, yeah. So I went up there with them and we cleft some bits and I brought them back here. And I, I, I just wanted to try the wood, see how it worked. Um, so we've got a few cleft bits here. It's not, it doesn't seem to me quite as to be s s quite so suitable for chair making as ash, but it should have the strength to it. So. Um, yeah, I'll be going back up there in the next month and we'll be making some clung chairs, which is a uh, departure from, yeah, it was Philip Clissett chairs that got us up to here in the first place, but uh, we'll be making some clung chairs. I haven't, I uh, don't think I've got any here, but they tend to have straight legs. They tend not to have so much steam bending. They're a bit chunky, a bit more clumpy. Oh, okay. Uh, but we, uh, quite often they have little rockers on them and that makes nice. Uh, it would have been a nursing chair in the first place, but it's a great one for sitting around the campfire and for people playing guitars and yeah, and just lounging about on nice little chairs. Cool. So well, I think um, yeah, next time we should uh, maybe get a bit more into having a look at some chairs, which would be good. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it'll be lovely to see this in a in a better state of repair. Mm -hmm. what, do, you, do you just sweep up the leaves and start again, or <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, well, these last two winters, uh, we've had COVID, so we've not yeah. been partying. But this serves very, very sweetly as a as a, a party um, party structure. So uh, yeah, yeah and when the kids were living at home, you know, they'd have the friends around. We'd have the fire pit. We'd bring come down here. Oh, in the structure, uh, yeah, in the great. Stru in the structure, yeah. And so these these seats out of the transit van, uh, the minibus, you know, the n nice, comfy things for the kids to sit on. But th they they will go before the courses start. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and I've seen you've got a kind of party game over here. <laughs> so what is, what is this? Um, <laughs> What's this? How did this come about? <laughs> There's an event. Our daughter was working for this uh, event held near Hay on Wye, which is a, a philosophy come music, come all sorts of things festival. Yeah. It's really yeah. good. And so we went along there, and there was this couple of enterprising young guys had a bigger version of, of this on the go, which is as a sort of table football thing where you have oh. to get these little discs Wait. Wait. through the hole in there. So you've got five on that side, five on this side, and the first one to get oh all their discs on the other side wins. And I saw that and I thought, wow, all you need is an old drawer out of a cupboard and we can make use of all these offcuts. You wouldn't believe how many of these offcuts we produce during the uh, season of courses. And so, so these are just the end of chair so legs. So these are just the end of chair legs already made. I just put a little round on the top there just to make them a bit nicer. And we've got this, which is great entertainment. You know, if we find yeah. we've got a bit of downtime on the courses, it's just uh, right. Good Come fun. on then. And you can get qu really quite quite frantic with it. Are we on, on the mic? Go. Wee. <laughs> hey, straight through. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> right. Come on. I'm gonna. I've got. To... You've got the hang of this, Bart. Shouldn't have given me a practice. <laughs> I've lost it. <laughs> oh, that's going to lose me saying I've had a practice is going to lose all the spontaneity. Of the, oh no! Right, we have got to play until someone wins. Ow! That's cheating. You've basically injured my finger. Oh dear. It's, it's got a touch of snooker to it, hasn't it? It's like in off. Oh! Oh! Look at that straight. Oh, come on now. <laughs> You're gonna beat me at this rate. Oh, he's on Oi! the way back. He's Here we on the go. Way come back. on, come on. Oh. Oops. Oh, right. Here we go. Here we go, Abbott. Here we go. I'm on a roll. Here we go. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've done it. Oh, well done, Barn. Look at that. Beginner's luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great so game. It's, it's what yeah. you do with it's what you do with your offcuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't burn them. Turn them into a game. Yeah. Lush. Well, um yeah, <laughs> I think uh on that note, um <laughs> Yeah, we should probably let you um crack on with you the rest of your day. You don't want to see the marble run that I made for my grandson, do you? Oh go on then, let's see it. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> what on earth is this? <laughs> it's a it's a great winter project that. That's <laughs> lovely. 